So it's the 21st of February, uh, 2012, and I'm here with Graham Bailey. Graham Bailey. Uh, and we're going to be talking a little bit about the, uh, the, the Queen's Theatre, the Queen's Hall. Queen's Hall, yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Graham. Tell me, tell, me what, tell, me, tell me some of your memories. Well, um, I was first involved in the Queen's Hall in 1970 when uh, we moved down here with uh, my wife and two children. Um, we came from Swindon, where we'd been involved in quite a lot of um, theatre things. So obviously we were uh, interested in getting involved when we came down here. So I think the first thing we did almost, my wife, uh, who was a pianist, um, met um, people from the musical comedy uh, who were just preparing a show, Calamity Jane, and uh, they were looking for a pianist, and uh, so immediately she became their pianist and played for their first show. Um, from then on, um, she played until 1981 when she died. Um, the whole family did get involved quite quickly. Um, I helped backstage to begin with when the children were young, and then uh, after that I took part in productions for the Musical Comedy and the Barnstable Operatic Society. And um, it was... Um, you know, full-time job really for all of us, one playing the piano and I was <laughs> performing and the two children, one helped with the makeup, and another one played in the orchestra for a bit, so it was quite a family connection really uh, from 1970 onwards until, you know, quite recently. Um, I have got here a plan of the Queen's Hall when it was um, 1969 which was um, um, when it was, as I say, just Queen's Hall flat floor, mm -hmm. and uh, it shows the price of the seats, seven and six, and uh, the cheapest ones here. Um, so it does show, you know, how things, we used to do our own booking in those days, and uh, so it does show what the sort of prices were then and what they are now. Um, we, we were quite amazed when we first took part in these shows in the Queen's Hall, because um, it was um, on the last night, I can always remember, it was a bit like going into Covent Garden. It was, um, the whole foyer was bedecked with flowers. It was amazing, really. Uh, there was a lady who used to do it, and, uh, it, you know, it, it was completely flowers all over. And on the last night, um, everybody on stage were presented with this bouquet. There were people going up presenting all the chorus. I mean, there must be about 20 or 30 bouquets being given to the society after their show and then after that in the John Gay room which um, well, we call it the John Gay room now at the gallery bar it, um, they had all these presents laid out on trestle tables and everybody in the cast got presents so it was quite a quite amazing thing going on the last night and all, all families were involved and it was quite a quite a family affair really um, my from then on, really, um, I became a member of a committee in 1992 to discuss plans for the refurbishing of the Queen's Hall. There was uh, the artistic director then was, I, I can't remember his name, but I know he was a Canadian, and he'd had um, experience of um, altering the theatres and, and, you know, developing them. And so we had quite an interesting time trying to draw up ideas how the Queen's Hall could be made into a proper theatre and I managed to actually provide uh, drawings of the, um, it was called the Arbit Hall originally because uh, I worked in an office which actually produced the plans. Um, in 1993 I joined the trustees of the theatre and we worked um, with, uh, I think, Rick Bond was then the um, artistic director, I think he still lives around here, and Bob Beatty, a solicitor here, he was the chairman. And um, during that time we uh, started the Queen's Consorts, which was the, before the Friends were formed, it was, they were called the Queen's Consort. And uh, I remember proposing the first chairman, Rose Todd, who now name is Wigmore, who lives in Lyme Regis, she was the first uh, chairman of the consorts, mm -hmm. so say then eventually became the um, friends of the North Devon Theatre. Um, um, so carrying on, I, I 
became involved with the uh, consorts, which I am still a member at the moment. I can remember the official opening of the uh, prefurbished theatre. Um, it was uh, quite an occasion, and I think uh, they had sort of civic reception, and uh, I think Tom Jones was the uh, show they did on stage. Um, other interesting bits, um, in 2000, the Barnstable Operatic Society, I've got a souvenir program here of it. Uh, they celebrated their 100th anniversary. They'd been performing in the theatre for many, many years. I don't know quite what I think it was. Um, they did their earlier shows probably in the cinema down here on the Strand, but uh, um, they, their 100th production was Iolanthe which was a repeat of the 1900 show which they started off doing. Um, again, it was Ireland. Um, I was fortunate to be um, chairman at the time and uh, um, my wife, June, was wardrobe mistress. And um, I know quite a few people that have memories longer back than I have of the um, Operatic Society and I've written down a few names which might be interesting to... Uh, Thank you. Um, and I'm leaving the souvenir program here so that people can see. Um, I've also got a, a, a tape of and, and program of the Beggar's Opera, which of course was John Gay's first, um, well, it was one of his uh, operas. And of course we have the John Gay Room, which was um, called originally in the Queen's Hall, and that was performed by the um, Friends Dramatic Society in 1968. There is a history of all the local societies in Barnstable, which was written by Frank Kemp, who was a local journalist, and um, that book is in um, the hands of Joe Griffiths at the moment. Um, as also a matter of interest, I um, did prepare plans for the conversion of the Guild Hall into a small theatre in 1973. It was a group of us that thought it wasn't being used very much, and it would be make it a little theatre, and we did actually get planning approval to convert it, but at the time the uh, mayor wasn't so keen on it, so it never got done, but um, it was a possibility. Um, so That's fantastic. Uh, yeah. uh, I mean, I can go on and tell you all sorts of other things. But, uh, you know. Okay, so, so, so from, from, from the point of view of... I mean, I've, I've lived in North Devon for uh, ten years. Yeah. And so I know the, the, the Queen's as it is now. Yeah. And I've obviously read enough to understand about how the seating was removable, and there were tea dances, that's and there right. were sort of that's right. yes. religious, there was yes. sort of religious that's services, right. and, and, yeah. and all yeah. sorts of things happening. Yeah. If you if you go back through your memory and you start to look at what are the what are the I'm always after the, perhaps the almost the images or the feelings or the the the. the, the so if, if you go back through those, yes. those memories, what, what things stand out for well, you? Well, I, I think it was very much a sort of family place. There, there used to be families using, as you say, there were um, fairs in there. They used to have the, the, the dances. They used to have antique um, fairs there. They used to go in uh, um, uh, on, on when I can remember going to the shows. You know, it was all family orientated. Um, all the children used to come and... and during the intervals, they also used to come up and uh, have a drink with you, and uh, you know, it, it was very much a, a family thing. There were only very few shows going on there, I suppose. You know, the, the, the local societies were the only ones that actually performed um, the main shows. There were other things, concerts going on, but uh, now, now when you have um, you know something on every day, virtually, it was. About once a month, you have something really big on. Otherwise, it was used for, as you, you say, markets and dances and, and things like that. So, uh, yes. Particular people or characters or, or, or acts that you might have seen that stand out in your memory? Um, yes. Um, I can't quite think of any particular. We did do um, the Desert Song here once, and. Um, the person that used to be called the Red Shadow, I can't remember his name at the moment, used to be quite well known. Um, he was called the Red Shadow, actually. He, he came down, and when we did it, he came and met our um, person who was taking the part. So um, um, I, I, his name escapes me at the moment, but he did. Um, that, that was one person that I remember. Um, the, the, I don't know, there's so many things going on. I, I don't know if I can pick any particular one. 
I can I can think out all sorts of weird things that went on, strange things that um, caused a bit of um, hilarity. <laughs> I can always remember one show we did when the uh, leading man had to have a moustache, and uh, one of the scenes he had to kiss the uh, principal lady, and half his moustache stuck onto the lady when he finished his kiss, and so that created a bit of hilarity. Um, but you know, you get all sorts of things like that. Um, happening in local uh, amateur theatre, which uh, all adds to the uh, you know, fun of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and if um, looking at the Queen's Hall now, we've had sort of you know, 60 years in, in, in yes. Uh, yes. As, as, the, as the Queen's Hall, as the Queen's Theatre, um, what, would you, what would you hope for the future for it? Let's um, say the number next 60 years. Well, um, I, th- I think uh, we, we've just done something which uh, involved um, a lot of college students um, production of um, um, oh God, what is it called now? <laughs> but they did have a lot of college students oh, um, HMS Pinafore mm-hmm. and uh, that was good and I, I, I can see these youngsters coming on and they really did enjoy being in the theatre I think we're very lucky in a place like North Dem to have such a big theatre sometimes difficult to uh, fill it, I must admit, but um, the youngsters do seem to enjoy coming and being in that sort of atmosphere, and, you know, that was very encouraging, uh, because a lot of the societies that use it are, you know, getting a bit older, and then to see, you know, these youngsters coming in and, and really being part of it, enjoying it, was great, so I, I can see that going on, and, um, yes, uh, you know, generally, uh, the friends seem to have developed very well and seem to be involving lots of people in the theatre. And, and I can see it going on, you know, quite well. We're lucky to have such a good, um, you know, staff there that seem to, you know, encourage people to use it, I think. That's what I wanted. I wanted an advert. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, particularly as a trustee, I want this gentleman to say you know, the next 60 years is going to be more fantastic. So yeah, we, 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 we talk about it quite often in, with the friends and saying how helpful and people are in, you know, in the staff there and, and they do really you know, make you feel welcome and, and, and that's a great thing, I think. And people that haven't been there very much, they do come in and, and they do feel you know, they are really welcome there. And mm-hmm. It's good, friendly family atmosphere, I think, especially you get with the pantomimes, of course, which are very popular, and um, there, you know, people come in and see the theatre probably for the first time and realise, you know, it's not a frightening place, but it's a place where, uh, you know, they feel happy and can enjoy themselves. It's very good, I think. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. (laughs) Well, uh, you know, uh, I've been connected with theatres all my life, and I must admit, when I came here, I was uh, almost overwhelmed by the how, how welcome you were made and, and how you know friendly and everything was. And uh, we've you know, always uh, been part of the theatre and uh, enjoyed being part of it really, because you know, everybody seems to be enjoying it. Great, that's brilliant.